Praise God. I had the, the privilege of, of doing a wedding last night, and uh, I told the couple, I said, you know, the center of your marriage has to be found on Jesus Christ. If you want this marriage to be successful, it's got to be on Jesus Christ. And one of the, one of the key factors in marriage is communication. you got to communicate. And so that's what I want to talk about this morning is the prayer life of a Christian. Is we've got to communicate with God. It, if, we, if we didn't communicate as husband and wife, we wouldn't have much of a relationship. And that's the same thing with our relationship with God. If we want a true, divine relationship with the Father in heaven, then we've got to have communication. We've got to communicate with our Father. And uh, there's a book called The Secret of Guidance. And the gentleman that wrote this book, this is what he said. He said, the great tragedy of life is not unanswered prayer, but unoffered prayer. He said, the secret of life is not unanswered prayer. It's unoffered prayer. And I know for myself, I can't speak for anybody in this room, but this between you and God. But my prayer life struggles. I, I, I get to the point that I'm studying God's Word, and I'm reading the Word, and I'm, and I'm meditating on the Word, that then my prayer life lacks. And I'm not saying that we've got to find the happy medium because we need God's Word. We need the Word of God. But we need fellowship with God, too. We need our time of prayer with God, and we need our time of fellowship with God. That's what draws us together and draws us together with God. So, you know, instead of it being something that we do every day, like breathing, eating, walking, and talking, we've got to, uh, uh, and it seems like we become like that little glass box on the side of the wall. You know when you're walking through the hospital, and they got the in-case emergency break glass, and it's got an axe or a fire extinguisher in it? That's kind of how we treat prayer is we kind of treat it like that glass box on the wall, break in case of emergency. And that's where we've got to get past that because that's a very true statement because we get that way sometimes. We get to where we're in a, in a, in a place in our, our walk with God that we're praying a lot. We're spending a lot of time in prayer. And then as time goes on, I find myself doing this. There, you know, Maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm praying for, praying for an hour or two. And then I find myself, when Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, I may be praying 15, 20 minutes. You know, we, it, it's what we spend our time in. We've got to get focused on it. There was a man that was a pilot, and he was having some issues. He ran out of fuel. And uh, he said, I'm 300 miles from the airport, and I'm 600 feet above the ground, and I'm out of fuel. He said, I'm descending rapidly. He said, he said to the uh, tower, he said, what do I do? And the tower said to Pilate, he, the dispatcher said, repeat after me, our Father, which art in heaven. He said, you better start praying because you're in trouble. See, that's what we treat prayer most of the time. We treat prayer as our source of go-to when we're in a, when a crisis. You know, when things are bad come to us, it's easy to pray when things fall apart. 9-11, everybody was on their knees praying. Huh? Israel is having this war. Everybody's starting to pray. You know, have we ever thought that some of the things in this world are happening because God's trying to get us to communicate with Him? Maybe that's part of the reason things are happening in this world because God's saying, my people are not communicating with me. My people are not getting on their knees and praying. I spend a lot of prayer time riding down the road, and I think, man, you know, I'm doing pretty good. I'm listening to the Word. I'm praying the Word. And then... The Lord lays this in my heart, Danny. He says, you know what? He said, it's convenient for you to pray going down the road because you're driving. It's convenient. But when are you going to take a little time when you're at home and come sit in the closet and pray with me? I want you to make time for me. I want you to spend time with me and fellowship with me. We've got to take time in prayer, not just when we're riding down the road or not when it's convenient for us. We've got to show God that I'm going to set aside time to spend with you, Father. And that's what he's desiring of us. He's desiring of us to spend time with him, to, to seek him. You know, we all, a lot of us in here have got kids that are grown that don't know Jesus as their Savior. And you know what? I pray for my son, and Randy prays for our son. But what God laid in my heart, he says, are you taking time to get in your prayer closet and play? Are you taking not just your convenient time, but taking time out of your day to spend with me and pray for this? See, we'll start seeing results and our children's lives, we'll start seeing results in, in the things that we're praying for when we start offering and stop worrying about our unanswered prayer, but start offering prayer to God. And we're going to talk about some different types of prayer this morning. But I want to share this with you. The Bible refers to the word prayer 
or excesses a prayer in 61 out of 66 books of the Bible, making close to 1,100 distinct references about prayer. That's a lot of prayer, isn't it? 61 out of the 66 books in the Bible, prayer is mentioned or a prayer is offered in God's Word. Paul was very devoted to prayer. He understood prayer. He understood the power of prayer, okay? Prayer was a part of his life, Apostle Paul's life. And he took it, he took it for granted that it would be a part of the everyday Christian's life. He figured that, you know what, we would make that a part of our life. So we can't, we can't be a really good Christian for God if we're not talking to Him and spending time with Him, right? We have to communicate. And, you know, that to, and, and what I've noticed in the day that we're living in, communication is one of, the, one of the biggest things that lacks in this world today. It's one of the biggest things that lacks on the job, in the home, it lacks in, in the church. It lacks everywhere you go. Com lack of communication has, has, has getting this world to the point that it's falling apart. You know, if you want to talk to me, don't send me an email. Don't send me a Facebook post. Call me if you want to talk to me. Because I don't have all of that other stuff, and I don't do all that other stuff. We've got to communicate, folks. And I, but rather than calling me, come talk to me. I'd rather talk face-to-face. Because I'm not about that other stuff. we got to be on board about communicating with one another. God wants fellowship between us and Him. He wants communication. He wants us to communicate with Him. We have things in our life that, that are falling apart. But what about Thanksgiving? And we're going to get to that here in just a minute. What about Thanksgiving? Not Thanksgiving the holiday, but Thanksgiving to God for being able to pray. For having the opportunity to pray and to seek Him. Amen? The first thing I want to talk about is pray with persistence. When you pray, you've got to be persistent in your prayer. Colossians 4 and 2 tells us this. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. He tells us to continue earnestly. So what is Paul saying? He said, devote yourself to prayer. Have a time that you set aside daily to spend with God. If I talk to Rainy once a week, we ain't got much of a relationship. It's not much there if I talk to her once a week. I'm gone two nights a week, four days out of the week I'm on the road. And if I talk to her just occasionally, then well, there's not much of a relationship. My partner that I, that I run with, he told me, he said, you talk more to your wife on the phone than I talk to mine in the course of a week. And I said, well, that ain't good. You need to spend time with your wife and talk to her. But the thing is, is we've got to have communication with one another. Once we learn, you can't get that communication with God if you don't have communication with each other. Amen? It starts with us. We've got to learn how to communicate with one another. And then that communication goes to our prayer life. That communication goes to us and God. We start communicating with the Father. And let me tell you something. When you get this communication with God and you, then this communication with you and spouse will start doing a whole lot better. And it'll be a whole lot better when we get that communication with God. I told the, the, the couple that was getting married last night, I told them, I said, I read about love is patient, love is kind, love is not easily angered, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 13. And I told them this, I said, I wish I'd have figured this out before, the, before I was married 10 years. Because I was married about 10 years before I figured out the love is patient, love is kind, love is not rude. Because I loved myself more than I did my spouse, more than I did Rainy, because I wanted everything my way. But we have to get that communication. And that communication between each other doesn't happen until you have this communication with you and God. You have to be persistent in your prayer. You have to set aside time to spend in God's, uh, uh, praying to God and His presence. You have to spend time with Him. Uh, Jesus spent a majority of His time praying. Jesus prayed throughout His time that He was here on earth. And uh, two parables in Luke 18 and Luke 11, and I'm just going to read a few verses of it. But Jesus was very persistent in his prayers. He was fully God, but yet he was fully man. So he still prayed to the Father. Luke 18 and 1 says this, Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. That sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? He says, You ought to. It, man always ought to pray and not lose heart. Then in Luke 11 and 9, he says, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. See, the problem is, is 
we don't have a problem asking God for something when, when we're in the crisis. Remember, we started about talking about the crisis. It's easy to pray when there's a crisis going on. But when everything's going good and you're on that mountaintop faith, where's our prayer time? Mine's down here. I don't know about you, but mine's down here when I'm on top of the mountain. That's why I pray God keep me in the valley because I'm looking up. But when we are down, when we're on top of that mountain, our prayer life struggles. It lacks with God. So we've got to seek and we've got to knock. And he says, seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. So these are verbs. And their present tense active voice could be translated, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. And that's what he's telling us. He says, I want you to keep on asking me. I want you to keep on seeking me. I want you to keep knocking on my door. Because when you're knocking on my door, you're talking to me. You're spending time with me. When you're seeking me, you're spending time with me. When you are asking, you're spending time with me. Seek and knock. We've got to spend time with God. Okay? There's a difference between persistent prayer and a long prayer. God's not asking you to spend time in a long prayer. He's asking you to be persistent in prayer. A person who is persistent in prayer does not necessarily have to pray for a long time. Because persistence means I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. Jesus went to the garden and he prayed. He prayed to the Father. He said, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. He said, but nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. How many times have any of us in our prayer said, Father, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done? How many times have we prayed that? I know when I pray, I'm asking God, God, can you heal this person? God, can you do this? God, can you do that? God, can you do this? God, can you do that? I'm not saying, God, not my will, but thine be done. Jesus knew that he had to go to the cross. But yet he said, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. But he didn't focus on the cup. He focused on nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. That's what he focused on. So some people give up easily when, uh, and quit because they, they say they're, they feel like their prayer and their joy is gone. They're, they're feeling like my prayer's not getting answered, so I give up. How many of you have been praying for something and God hadn't answered you yet, so you just kind of just slack off? You kind of give up on God. It's like, well, you know what, God, you hadn't answered it. I know people that prayed 10, 12, 15, 20 years. For salvation for a loved one. And I'm going to tell you that persistent prayer paid off. Because God answered it. They come to salvation. And they come to eternal life. So we're not to live for our, by our feelings. But we're to live by the commandments of our Lord. Who tells us to pray without ceasing. God tells us pray without ceasing. Paul says it in the New Testament. Pray. Pray without ceasing. Okay. So the second one is pray with passion. So we pray with persistence. Now we pray with passion. Do you have passion in your prayers? If you're persistent in praying, where's the passion? Is your heart in it? If we're persistent in something, it stands to reason that you are to be passionate about it. Paul says that we should be vigilant or be watchful. It is the opposite of laziness. It describes a passionate prayer. Okay? So Jesus was passionate about his prayers. When he went and prayed, his prayer life, man, it was something that he was always doing. Man, Jesus was praying. When the disciples, he told them, go get in the boat and go to the other side. He went to the mountain and he was praying. And then here he come the next day walking on, or come that later that time, come on, walking on the water to him. But he was spending time in prayer. Every time we see Jesus praying, he's praying with passion. He's praying with passion to the Father. Luke 3 and 1, at, at Jesus' baptism, while he was praying, heaven was opened up. Passionate prayers opens heaven, folks. When he was baptized, he was praying, heaven opened up, and it says that the Holy Spirit descended as a dove because he was passionate about his prayer. And the Father said, this is my Son in whom I'm well pleased. If the Father's well pleased with the Son, and we are saved by grace through faith, and we're supposed to follow Jesus, then why are we not passionate in our prayers? If we want to be in tune with the Father, we need to be passionate in our prayers. People tell me all the time, well, I pray, I pray, but I don't, I don't hear God. Well, are you passionate in your prayer? Are you persistent in your prayer? Luke 6, 12, before he called his disciples, this was before Jesus called his disciples, he spent time, he spent the whole night in prayer. 
He was passionate about his prayer. Who to pick? He didn't just go pick anybody. He prayed and asked the Father. And he was passionate about it. And he was passionate because prayer, passionate prayer gives us direction. We say, well, I don't know where to go next. Well, be passionate in your prayer and God will give you that direction because you're seeking him, okay? Luke 9, uh, 29, this talks about Jesus' transfiguration when he was on the Mount of Transfiguration. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face became different, remember? And his clothing became white and gleaming. He started, he, he was, the, the disciples, Peter and them saw him. Peter and John saw him in his glory on the Mount of Transfiguration. So passionate prayer enables us to experience the glory of God. Passionate prayer get, helps us to experience the glory of God. They got to see Jesus transformed on that mountain. They got to see him in his glory, but just for a little bit. But now today they're seeing him in his glory. One day we will see Jesus in his glory, but we've got to be passionate about our prayer. John 17 and uh, his high priestly prayer Passionate prayer impacts the lives of others. Jesus prayed for us. You say, well, how could he pray for me? I wasn't here. He prayed for this world. He laid his life down that whosoever believeth in him shall be saved. He was praying for me. When he was on that cross, he was praying for you and he's praying for me. When he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He was in prayer. He was praying for you. He's praying for me. Luke 23 and 24 as he hung on the cross. That's what he did as he prayed for us. Thirdly, prayer with thankfulness. Do we thank God when we pray? We're persistent in our prayers. We're passionate in our prayer. Are we being thankful in our prayer? Are we giving God thanks? Ephesians 5 and 20, Paul says this, giving thanks always for all the things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said giving thanks always. We should always thank God. You know what? How many of you have, tried, have been on the telephone and you're trying to call somebody maybe to make a doctor appointment or you're calling to try to get, get through to some organization or something and what's the first thing to do? Hello, can I, put, can I put you on hold? And then they put you on hold. And you're sitting there listening to that boring, sleepy music and you can't even think straight. And they're sitting there and you're on hold, you're on hold, you're on hold, and you can't never get through. And you get tired of being on hold. Randy, I'll call her and she'll text me. I can't talk, I'm on hold right now. Aren't you glad Jesus doesn't say, I'm going to put you on hold? Aren't you thankful that Jesus says that when you pray, I hear you? I, you have a direct line to the Father, and it's through Jesus Christ, the Son, that laid his life down for you and me. We're blessed to be able to pray. How many countries are, are there in this world today that if somebody catches them praying, they're going to be persecuted, even probably killed, because they're sitting and praying. So, Ephesians 5 and 20, Paul's telling us that thanksgiving is the natural result of being filled with, the, filled with and walking on the influence of the Holy Spirit. That's what he's telling us in Ephesians 5 and 20, that it is the natural result of being filled and walking in the Spirit of God is thanksgiving. Philippians 4 and 6, he says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be, named, be made known to God. We need to be thankful. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. First Thessalonians 5 and 18 says, in, every, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ for you. This is the will of God in, in Christ Jesus for you. So be thanksgiving. First Thessalonians 5 18 tells us that giving thanks at all times is God's will for us in Christ. That's God's will. It's for us to give thanks for everything that he's done. Persistence, passion, thanksgiving. That's what he's telling us. Colossians 3 and 17. And whatever you do in word or deed, deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. How many of us thank God when we pray? God, I thank you for the day. I start out, God, thank you for the day. And then I start, God, if you would just do this, 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 this. I start out with thanking him. But then after I start out with it, I don't end with, thank you, Jesus. I end with, amen. See, we have to thank God for what he's done. We have to thank God for what he's going to do. How about that? How about thanking him for what he's going to do? He's going to save my children. 
He's going to deliver the, the, the drug addicts. He's going to deliver the alcoholics. He's going to deliver these people because I'm going to be persistent. I'm going to be passionate. I'm going to be thankful. See, our prayer life is, is that communication that we've got to get right. We've got to get it, get it focused on God so that we will see results. We're not seeing results because we're not praying enough. Some of you in here probably are praying enough. I'm not, and th then I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching at me. But what we need to understand is God wants us persistence, passionate, thanksgiving. He wants us to be them things. He says that believers, everything that as believers, everything we say or do should be done in the name of the Lord Jesus as we give thanks. Everything we say or do should be done in the name of the Lord Jesus. How many things do we say or do in the name of the Lord Jesus? Hmm? When that dog tried to get my ice cream sandwich, my foot first thing that come out. And my poor little wife was in the way. I didn't do it in the name of Jesus, did I? I did it in the name of my ice cream sandwich. <laughs> We've got to get to the point that when we react, it's in the name of Jesus. When we react. And let me tell you something. When your prayer life is persistent and your prayer life is passionate and your prayer life is with thanksgiving, guess what? Your everyday life is different. How you react to people is different. How you walk is different. So it's not just studying the Word, but it's studying the Word and prayer to God is what changes our lives. That's what makes us the men and women of God is the Word, prayer. That's what leads us to Christ. Amen? 1 Timothy 4, 3-4 says, Forbidding to marry and command, commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. Okay? So what that's saying is he's saying that food and marriage are good things given to us by God and are to be received with thanksgiving and gratitude. How many of us are thankful? I know probably every one of us in this room are so thankful God provides for us. He provides our food. He gives us, provides our jobs. He always makes a way. I heard a gentleman talking the, uh, the other day, and he said that he was at his wits end and didn't have a dime to his name. And he prayed, and his wife told him, said, look, let's just hold hands and let's pray. And he said, we had a bill that was due, uh, uh, a loan payment that was due that was $600. And he said, I prayed. I my, did what my wife said. She grabbed my hand and we prayed. And he said, after we prayed, I went out and checked the mailbox. And he said, when I got to that mailbox, there was a check in the mail for $650. $50 over what I had to have. Tell me prayer don't change things. God is a God that of yea and amen. He loves his children. He's not going to let us go without. He tells us to seek him. To seek him. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And these things will be added unto you. So we have to seek him. And then the fourth thing, the last that I want to talk about is prayer making intercession. Pray with intercession. Intercessory prayer. What did Jesus do? He prayed a lot in intercessory prayer. Uh, intercessory prayer is praying for others. And Jesus prayed a lot for others. It's praying for God's will to be done in our lives. See, that's what Jesus prayed too. How many times did we pray, God, your will be done in my life? God, your will be done in my family's life. Intercessory prayer characterizes the prayer life of Jesus. Isaiah 53 and 12, the Bible talks about, He himself bore the sins of many and interceded for the transgressors. He interceded for us. Do you know why Jesus came to the earth? He didn't come to do miracles. He didn't come to do miracles. He didn't come so people would, sit, would, would, would be healed. He came to die for the sin of the world. He came to die for you and for me so that we could make it to heaven. He came to die. That was the only reason Christ came to the earth was to die for sin because he's the only one that could take that debt. None of us could take that debt. None of us can live by the Ten Commandments without failing. None of us can do it. So he said, I'm going to go do it myself. Luke 22 and 23, Jesus tells Peter, I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. He prayed for his disciples. He prayed for them to, to strengthen them. 
And he taught them as they walked with him. They saw him. How many times do you think the disciples talked amongst themselves? You think they didn't probably say to each other, man, he sure prays a lot. He's the Savior of the world, but he sure spends a lot of time in prayer. Do you think they didn't think that? I think they probably thought that. I would have. If I was one of his disciples, I'd have thought, man, he prays a lot. Luke 23 and 34, on the cross, Jesus was praying for others when he said, Father, forgive them, for they know they do not know what they're doing. That's us. That's every person that walks the face of this earth. He said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. He forgave the people that hung him on the cross. He forgave the people that are sitting in this room and myself. He forgives the people that come to him and say, Father, forgive me. He says, I forgive you. I laid down my life so that you could be forgiven. Praise Jesus. Amen. John 14 and 15, Jesus interceded for us, asking the Father to send the Holy Spirit. Hey, that's not just for the disciples. That's for you and me. He interceded for us, and he said, Father, send the Holy Spirit, because they ain't going to make it without the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit inside of us, because the Holy Spirit's what gives us conviction. The Holy Spirit's what gives, keeps us focused when we fall. He's what guides us and directs us. John 17 and 19, he prayed for us, us as the church, the body, in his high priestly prayer. Listen to the intercessory prayer. He says, I ask on their behalf. I do not ask on behalf of the world, but on those whom thou hast given me. He prayed intercessory prayer for on our behalf. He prayed for us. Romans 8, 34, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and me. There's our direct line. He's seated at the right hand. When Stephen in the book of Acts, when he was stoned to death, he's, he could look up before he died. Stephen looked up and he seen Jesus standing up at the right hand of the Father. And then he died. Because he had the Holy Spirit guiding him through that time. Hebrews 7 and 25 says, Hence, also he is able to save for whoever those who draw near to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. You know what? Jesus is praying for us. Jesus is talking. He's talking to the Father for us. He loves each and every one of us. And did you think that he doesn't care about the lost? If he didn't care about the lost, we wouldn't be sitting in this room today. We would be in heaven with Christ already if he didn't care about the lost. I've gotten so caught up in me before that I said, Lord, come. Like John, the, like John the Revelator said, he said, Lord, Jesus, come. And I've gotten in that thought of seeing where things are going and seeing the, I've gotten to the point in my life that I was looking at everything bad. I was looking at everything negative instead of looking at everything that God has to offer that is good. See, we get into that rut in life and then our prayer life starts to lack. Our prayer start, our, our uh, persistence of prayer starts to fade off because we get to looking at the world and stop looking at the Father. See, we got to look at the Father so that we will have passionate prayers. We will have persistent prayers. We'll pray with thanksgiving and that we will pray with intercessory for the world and pray for those that are lost. We've got to get our prayer life where God wants it to be. Don't give up because you turn on the TV and you see things falling apart. Don't give up, period. Because God has not give up on you. God has not give up on me. So we got to quit giving up, period. And we got to start standing for what is important and praying and spending that time for the, for, for the ones we love and for the Father. Jesus prayed in ancestry prayers. He was ever praying for all of us. Amen? He was ever praying for all of us. So this morning, I want to ask you this. And this is just a personal question for you and God. I'm not asking you to raise your hand. I'm not asking you to say anything. I'm asking this between you and God. What does your prayer life look like this morning? Not yesterday, not a week ago. What does your prayer life look like this morning? Are you persistent in your prayer? Is your prayers passionate? Are your prayers filled with intensity and fervor? Or are they weak and timid and lacking faith? What about gratitude? How much time have you spent thanking God for all He has done for you? 
And who are you praying for? Is there anyone in your life that you're praying for, praying that will be saved? Is there anybody you're praying that you want them to be saved? Is there a burden on your heart to see God's kingdom expand, to see His will be done? That's what He wants from us. He wants us to pray for the lost to be saved. He wants us to pray for salvation. I'm so thankful that somebody prayed for me. I'm so thankful they didn't give up on me, that they prayed with persistence. They prayed with passion. They prayed with thanksgiving. And they prayed with intercessory prayer. Each and every one of us are here today, and if you're saved by grace through faith, it's because somebody prayed for you. It's because somebody loves you. And that person that loves you is Jesus Christ. But not only that, he's put somebody in your life that loves you and that's praying for you. So I ask you today, as you leave this building and you get, we get ready to close here, when you walk out of here, you think about this prayer. You think about this time of spending with God this week. When you wake up in the morning, maybe set your alarm clock for a little earlier and get down on your knees and pray to God. Don't just do it when it's convenient. Don't just do it when it works for you. But do it when it works for Him. Do it because you're making an effort to step out and say, God, I want to, do, I want to be better. I want to serve you better. I want to spend time with you. I want this relationship, me and you, I want this relationship to grow. I want it to be stronger. I want it to be wound together like a three-braided three cord. I want it to be tied together where it can't be broken. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit tied to me. I want that three strands wrapped around me so that I'm in the grace of God every time I walk out my door or every time I walk in my door. Either way. So as we leave this place today, think about that. Think about the prayer that God has given. Think about the, the, the blessing that we have to communicate with the Father. We have that blessing and that communication to the Father, and it's through Jesus Christ the Son. We get to communicate to Jesus, and he takes it to the Father. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord. Father, I thank you for the power of prayer. Jesus, you spent roughly 33, 33 and a half years on this earth. And Lord, you spent a lot of time praying to the Father. You were fully God, but yet you were fully human while you was on this earth. And yet you did not sin. Yes, you're the Son of God. But yet you still prayed. Because your communication was your, you said, I'm about my Father's business. Lord Jesus, if I want to be about your business, then I've got to talk to you. I can't just be about your business if I don't have any communication. If I don't have any relationship. There's no communication. There's no relationship. If there's no relationship, then I'm just like a, a, a boat out in the sea being tossed to and fro. Father, I pray as we leave this place today, Father, that we don't leave your word sitting here at the door. That we hide these scriptures, we hide these verses in our heart. Pray without ceasing. Pray with thanksgiving. Father, let us hide these words in our heart, Father, that when we, if we get to our, our homes and we get to our everyday life, that we don't forget about you. That we have that intercessory prayer for others. That we have that prayer of saying, thank you, Father. That we have that prayer of passion. We have that prayer of persistence. That we don't give up. That we don't give up. Father, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for your, your wonderful word. And I just thank you for everyone here at, at, at this place, Father. At, this, at the, your house of worship. I just ask if there's someone here today that, Father, at the sound of my voice, that they don't know you as their Savior. That they say, I don't have communication with you because I don't know you. Like some people know you. Father, I ask today that they will ask you to come into their heart and change their life. That, they, that you would come inside through the Holy Spirit and that you would, you would deal with their hearts, Father. That you would, you would change them, Father. That they be your child. Father, if they accept you today, I pray that they'll share you with somebody, not hide you. Father, we thank you for all that you do, and we give you the honor and the glory. And it's through Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen.